Remember, it's rolling and pack ship. On today's episode, why are there no atomic cargo ships? This episode is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.com TV today. If you're a fan of large engineering projects that are pleasing to the eye, take a look at this. This beautiful ship is the NS Savannah, a small cargo passenger vessel launched in 1959 in Camden, New Jersey under a U.S. Maritime Administration contract. At 600 feet long and 14,000 tons, she wasn't big even by the standards of the day, and her 21 knot speed wasn't record-breaking either. But the Savannah was and is a historically significant achievement because it was nuclear-powered. The ship was built to demonstrate that the same reactor technology that powered the then-current nuclear submarines could also be used for civilian operation in surface vessels. And for over a decade, the Savannah operated as a sort of floating goodwill ambassador for atomic propulsion. What she couldn't do, however, was beat the economics of crude oil pricing circa 1972. Now, $2 a barrel oil made bunker fuels dirt cheap, and with a limited commercial supply of reactor components, fuels, and personnel, civilian atomic ship propulsion oil lapsed into obscurity. Well, things are very different today. Crude oil is expensive. Cargo ships are bigger, much bigger. Global trade is much larger, with more goods transshipped than ever before, especially from the major manufacturing centers in Asia. And critically, governments worldwide are moving to rapidly decarbonize industries that are intensive fossil fuel users, one of which is commercial shipping. Now, from an engineering standpoint, there are plenty of good reasons for cargo vessels to go nuclear. Today's supersized tankers and container ships will need powerful engines, and fission technology is proven in large aircraft carriers. While nuclear-qualified engineering personnel were a rarity in 1960, six nations operate nuclear vessels today, and the U.S. Navy alone qualifies hundreds of shipborne reactor personnel every year, offering a pre-existing nucleus to skilled people, many of whom would likely enjoy the ability to use their skills at sea in civilian life with excellent pay and working conditions. Now, nuclear-powered cargo ships, they could expect to sail for as long as 20 years before refueling, allowing both faster turnaround and the potential to use port facilities where bunkering is unavailable, expensive, or both. And environmental benefits are, of course, obvious. In an age where the CO2 footprint of consumer goods shipped across the world is becoming a political issue, carbon-free shipping may be able to operate at rates higher than fossil fuel hauled cargo. And with carbon taxes proliferating, shipping companies could not only avoid the taxes, but may be able to sell carbon credits to other companies, as Tesla does with electric cars. Now, there are lots of possibilities. After 65 years of successful and safe reactor operation, there are no technical reasons to stop this from happening. If engineers ran government energy policy, I'm sure it would have happened years ago. But despite the urgent calls from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change to accelerate the decarbonization of global economies, the same technically illiterate protest groups that have hobbled the nuclear industry for the last 50 years are inexplicably still active. Now, I suspect they have political motivations and irrationally cling to their anti-nuclear stance despite the obvious benefits for CO2 emission reduction. But the technology is proven and it's ready to go. Now, it's going to be interesting to watch how the conflicting demands of anti-nuclear groups and the global warming activists reconcile their differences. We're half a century late with nuclear-powered commercial cargo vessels. It's time to get going. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by Engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. For our deeper engineering video series for the manufacturing professional, visit engineering.com TV to watch exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, not found here on our YouTube channel. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.